Intermediate Algebra, Section 9.6. Solving exponential equations. Equations with variables in the exponents are called exponential equations. We can solve certain exponential equations by using the principle of exponential equality. We saw this earlier in this chapter, but it states if b to the m power equals b to the n, then the exponents must equal one another. So m must equal n. We do have restrictions on the base. The base cannot have a value of negative 1, 0, or 1. And let me show you an example of that. If we're given this first problem, our exponent is the variable and they're asking us to solve this. You may just be able to figure in your head it's 2 and that's great, but to verify that and show the procedure, if I can transform the equation to have both sides having the same base, and I can since 9 is equivalent to 3 squared using the principles of exponential equality, since I have common bases, then our exponents must equal one another. Looking at this next example, I can't use that procedure. There's no way I can transform 9 into a base of 2. So what do we do? When it seems impossible to write both sides of an equation as powers of the same base, then we have another principle, and it's called the principle of logarithmic equality. And it states that if you have log base a of x equal to log base a of y, then x must equal y. And that's exactly what we're going to do to solve for this equation is to use that principle. And to do that, we need to take the logarithm it can be either a common or natural of both sides. What does that do for us? By taking the log of each side, I've maintained equality. And if you remember, we have the power rule of logarithms. If you're taking the log of something raised to a power, that power becomes the coefficient. And as I said, I'm taking the common logarithm of each side, which is base 10 where I haven't written a base, it's understood that it's 10. Solving for x, divide both sides by log of 2. These cancel out. x is equal to log of 9 over log of 2. That would be the exact answer. If we want an approximate answer, then we would use a calculator, taking the log of 9, finding its value, and dividing it by the log of 2. Reminding that log of 9 divided by log of 2 is not the same as log of the quotient 9 halves. So once I tap equals, we have a value rounding to the nearest tenth. We'll say 3.2 would be the answer. And you could check, is 2 to the 3.2 approximately generating a value of 9? In the next problem, inspecting these bases, we can transform 27 into a base of 3. So we can solve it similar to the first problem. 27 is 3 to the third power, since 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Using the principle of exponential equality, that means common bases, exponential powers are equal to one another and solving for x, subtract an 8 from each side, we end up with x is equal to a negative 5. We run into a similar problem to the previous one. Although they share a common 6, 18 cannot be written with a base of 6, so the only alternative is to take the logarithm of both sides, common or natural, it doesn't matter. Generally people prefer the common log of both sides. Either one will generate an equivalent solution. The log of a quantity raised to a power using our power rule 
it becomes a coefficient. So we have an x minus 5 times the log of 6 equals the log of 18. Peeling away the layers to get to x, we'll divide both sides by log of 6 so that the log of 6 over log of 6 is equivalent to 1. That leaves us with an x minus 5 equal to our division of logs here. And last, to get x by itself, we'll add a 5 to both sides. The 5's cancel out, so our exact solution would be here. And to come up with an approximate value, again, using the calculator, if we put the log, common log of 18 and divide it by the common log of 6, we get the following result, but adding 5 to that leaves us with an approximate value of 6.6 .6 for our solution. When you're given a problem that has a base of E, and there's no way that we can transform our 30 into a base of E. Instead of taking a common logarithm, you'll find that taking the natural log of each side, and recall that ln of something, I'll say x, is shorthand for log base E of that quantity. Doing that, we have method in our madness because, I'll show you what happens, Again, our variable that we're solving for is t. It's an exponent. The power rule for logarithms allows us to take that exponent as a coefficient of the log. And let me write the log out here. Log base e, the natural logarithm of this e is equal to the natural log of 30. By definition, any time you take the log of a base of that base, this is equivalent to 1. So we have a 1 times t is t. Our exact answer is the natural log of 30. And here I can use the shorthand. And if we're required to give an exact answer, grab the calculator and tap the natural log button here, ln of that number, and this is base e, is equal to a 3.4, rounding to the nearest tenth. And just to show you that the log base e of e is in fact 1, I'll put in the natural log, which is log of base e, this is shorthand for our natural log, of e, and to enter in e, I have to hit shift and our log and the power that it's to. It's to the first power. e is to the first power. And when I tap 1, there's, or tap equals, I get a result of 1. The natural log, which is base e of e, gives us the value of 1. Same situation in this next problem because the base is e. The best bet is to take the natural log of both sides, the log of a quantity with an exponent. The exponent becomes the coefficient, so we have a negative 0.1t times the ln of e is equal to the ln, which is natural log of 5. Again, we have the log base e, this is shorthand for that, of e, this results in a value of 1, leaves us with negative 1 tenth t equals ln of 5, and solving for t, we'll divide both sides by negative 0.1. So here's our exact answer, and if we want an approximate, these of course will cancel out, and leaving t by itself, we end up with natural log of 5 divided by 1 tenth is going to give us 16.1 and a positive divided by a negative is a negative. 
and always we can check these equations by replacing our variable with the value. We'd have a negative times a negative, which would be a positive e to this positive power. See that it does result in a value of 5. In this next one, our variable is in the exponents. We're working with e. Before taking the log of each side, just to make life easier, divide both sides by 2. That leaves us with a 9 is equal to the 2's canceling out e to the 4x. And to solve for the variable that's now in the exponent, the only way to do that is to take the log of each side. And the log of choice here, since we're working with a base e, is the natural log. The natural log of 9 is equal to the natural log of e to the 4x. An exponent within our log becomes a coefficient. So we have 4x times the log of e. There we go. ln of e, log base e of e, is 1. That leaves us with ln, natural log of 9, is equal to 4x. And solving for x, we'll undo multiplication with division. Our exact solution would be the natural log of 9 divided by 4. And an approximate value would be to take the natural log of 9, calculate its value, and divide the result by 4. So x has an approximate value of, rounding to the nearest tenth, 0.5. When the variable is not, or the base is not by itself, we want to undo that. And one more example here is the following, solving this problem to solve for x, we want to get that as much as we possibly can by itself. The 6's cancel out when we subtract 6 from each side on the left. It leaves a 4e to the negative x. 10 minus 6 is 4. And again, before taking the log of each side to get that variable from the exponent, we'll divide both sides by 4. That leaves an e to the negative x is equal to 4 divided by 4, or 1. We're now ready to take the natural log of each side because of having this base. ln of e to the negative x, the exponent becomes the coefficient, leaving ln of x equal to ln of 1. Ln of e, log base e of e is 1. It leaves a negative x is equal to ln of 1. To solve for a positive variable, we'll multiply both sides by negative 1. And so our answer turns out to be negative 1 times the ln of 1, which is the exact answer. And for an approximate value, when we take the natural log of 1, we end up with 0, and negative 1 times 0 is leaving us with 0 for our final answer.